It's time to update our complete guide to Universal Orlando Resort for 2020. You are listening to episode 389 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. What's up, Internet? We're bringing you our updated 2020 pocket audio guide to the Universal Orlando Resort, covering everything you need to know about the theme parks, hotels, and more. This is the perfect guide for anyone who hasn't visited the resort in a while, or for people who are thinking of going for the first time. So let's get on with it. The Universal Orlando Resort consists of two theme parks, Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. There's also a water park, Volcano Bay. Uh, A shopping and entertainment district, which is City Walk, and there are six on-site hotels, the Portofino Bay, the Royal Pacific, the Hard Rock, Cabana Bay Beach Resort, Sapphire Falls Hotel, and Aventura. And then there are also two iDrive hotels, the Endless Summer Resort, consisting of the Surfside Inn and Suites, and the Dockside Inn and Suites. The resort is continuing to expand with the purchase of over 500 acres of land near the Orange County Convention Center that NBC Universal have announced will be their third theme park, Epic Universe which is expected to open in 2023. Okie dokie, so the first thing you'll have to deal with is getting to the resort. So if you're traveling from Orlando International Airport, you can take a taxi or Uber a Lyft, uh, and obviously that'll cost you a, a small fee. Or call um, me or Chris. It'll yeah. cost you a little more. <laughs> um, Universal <laughs> recently changed their Uber pickup and drop-off. Um, it's now located on the fifth floor of the parking garage. Um, mm-hmm. Universal also has a paid-for service to the resort from the airport for hotel guests called the Superstar Shuttle, which I haven't actually heard many people talk about. Um, but you can book that in advance. Um, and also, many of the hotels on our drive in the surrounding area will have regular shuttle buses to the resort, and you can even walk from some of the neighbouring hotels. But the main way most people will get to the resort will be by car. Yes, uh, by car you will enter the resort through one of the main entrances and park in the multi-story parking lot that is made up of two structures which consists of five and six levels respectively. They are split into six different parking zones. Jaws, Cat in the Hat, Spider-Man, King Kong, Jurassic Park, and E.T. The lot itself is also split into regular and prime parking. This will also be where you would park if you are visiting Volcano Bay. Regular parking is currently $26 and Prime is $40. The benefit of Prime parking is that you will be parked on the third floor, literally one floor down, (laughs) and not need to take an escalator or elevator to reach the main walkways to get to City Walk. Like I say, handicap parking is a regular price and it's on the same floor. So if you need that and you have a handicap parking, there you go. Good point. Uh, Valley parking is also an option, starting at $26 for two hours, rising to $55 for more than two hours if you park before 6 p.m. Wow. Annual pass holders will receive parking discounts, free self-parking, or even free valet parking, depending on the pass held. (laughs) Self-parking is free after 6 p.m., except on Halloween Horror Nights event nights. As we found out when we came over in 2015. Yes, (laughs) yes. Uh, now, if you are staying on any of the on-site hotels, please note the cost of parking at the hotel or theme parks is not included. Uh, guests can get to the parks by walking or water taxi, which is quite good fun, especially if you get a decent skipper. Mm-hmm. If you stayed at the Portofino Bay, the Hard Rock, the Royal Pacific or Sapphire Falls hotels, and if you're at Cabana Bay or Adventura, you can get there on foot or by shuttle bus. And there is a shuttle bus for both the Endless Summer Resort hotels as well. Um, now, you will traverse the parking lot using a mix of elevators, escalators, and moving walkways, which are a lot of fun when you're passing everybody really fast. <laughs> um, but make sure if you're, not stand- if you're standing still to stand to one side. Because people will complain. Please. Yes. <laughs> Move. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the way to get to the obligatory bag check metal detectors in the parking lot hub before making your way to Universal City Walk. Now, this area contains the Cinemark multi-screen state-of-the-art cinema, the Hollywood Drive-In Mini Golf, a highly themed twin 18-hole mini golf course split into the Haunting of Ghostly Greens and Invaders from Planet Putt courses. Uh, there's also a live concert venue in the Hard Rock Live. Yep, there's many excellent choices of restaurants. Trust me, they're awesome. From yep. the highlight quick service options of Red Oven Pizza Bakery, uh, you can get sandwiches at Breadbox, you've got Hot Dog Hall of Fame, and then some of the top sit-down options, you've got a Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen. Uh, if you want Mexican, there's Antihitos, you've got Vivo Italian Kitchen. 
NBC Sports Grill and Brew, and the new, which I highly recommend, oh, Big yes. Fire American Fair, as well as your favourite chain restaurants like Hard Rock Cafe, a Bubblegum Shrimp Company, and Margaritaville. Now, if you've been listening to the show for long enough, you'll know that the burger sushi restaurant Cowfish can be hit and miss, but if it caught if but it caught at the right time, it can be really good. It can. Um, it was awesome. City Walk also includes many grab and go options such as Cinnabon and Starbucks for quick bites on the way to the parks. And make sure to check out the star of City Walk, which is Voodoo Donut, which has a massive menu of one of a kind unique donuts. Yes. And sweeter options can also be found at Menchie's, frozen yogurt, and Cold Stone Creamery for ice cream. Uh, City Walk also includes a few shopping options, such as your one-stop shop for park merch outside of the theme parks, the Universal Studios store. There's also a guest services kiosk for all your resort-related needs and questions. People don't utilize that enough. Nope. <laughs> don't start. Only you guys. Don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Now, for the over 21s, which of course I'm not, uh, there are many <laughs> drinking options, shut up, um, such as the Lone Palm Airport, Fat Tuesdays. Doesn't yeah. somebody recommend Fat Tuesdays? I don't, I don't know. think who it is. Yeah. And the Red Coconut Club. For all you singers out there, you can end the night at Rising Star and even on select nights be backed by a live band. Better than a I dead like one. I love it. I like Do you like to apologize to several people <laughs> for your singing? <laughs> You can do it Going to a lot of people. band night. Yeah. And you don't have to only apologize to the audience, but also the band. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are two things we must include before we enter the parks that could impact your enjoyment of them. Uh, the first is the Attraction Assistance Pass, the AAP, it, which is designed to assist guests who, due to their disability, may have difficulty waiting in a regular queue. If an attraction has a posted wait of 30 minutes or more, you will receive a return time to come back to the attraction and enter through the alternate queue. If the attraction's posted wait time is less than 30 minutes, you'll be directed to enter the attraction through the alternate entrance. Now the AAP pass can be used at every attraction. The AAP will accommodate the person assigned and up to five others in their group. All admission tickets in the group must be electronically assigned to the AAP when it is obtained from guest relations. And guests can only have one attraction return time listed on the AAP and must use it or cancel it before obtaining another. The pass is active for the length of your visit or for the annual pass holders uh, up to two weeks. Uh, To obtain this pass, go to guest services in either Universal Studios Florida or Islands of Adventure. Interesting. Um, And secondly is Universal's Express Pass. Now, if you've never been to Universal and you're familiar with Disney's Fast Pass system, Express works kind of the same way, but rather than reserving a time to come back, you just use the dedicated Express line instead of the standby line. Um, The other difference is Express is a paid-for upgrade, not free like like at Disney. Um, There's a couple of options for Express. One option gives you one Express entrance per ride. The second gives you unlimited Express entrance, both of which can be one or two park options and can be bought for multiple days. Now, pricing varies, so please check universalorlando.com for the pricing for Express. Um, There's also one more option for Express passes, but we will get to that later. Um, We should also mention that a couple of the rides in the park now offer a virtual queue which allows guests to book a ride time on the Universal app or at the kiosks at the ride to allow them to virtually wait in line, um, go do something else and come back when your allotted time is due. These are currently available at Race Through New York York, starring Jimmy Fallon and Fast and Furious Supercharged. Um, And one last thing to mention before we enter the parks are the lockers. Um, Day lockers are available to rent at the entrance of both parks. Lockers are also available at most rides and are complimentary except on the water rides. Warning, you are not permitted to take anything on the Incredible Hulk or Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket Roller Coaster rides and just as is the same at the entrance to the resort, metal detectors are in place to make sure of this. So please make sure to put all your belongings in a locker before joining the queue because otherwise you'd just be sent back. Yeah. And one other thing there, just to add, is the free lockers that you get for these rides are very small. Mm-hmm. Yes. So if you have a bigger bag, you'll have to get one of the bigger lockers, which will cost you a couple bucks. Yep. Yes. So bring one of those small drawstring bags. That's usually your best bet. Mm-hmm. Like something around that size uh, fits in there nicely. Yep. Okay. That brings us to our first park, Universal's Islands of Adventure. We will begin with our overview in Port of Entry, where Lee cries. <laughs> <laughs> the That's rivers true. are filled with Lee's tears. 
<laughs> this is the main street of the park and is an area that will reward the inquisitive guest. The icon of this area and park as a whole is inspired by the Pharaoh's Lighthouse of Alexandria. Port of Entry contains two stores, Islands of Adventure Trading Company for all your park merch needs, and island and your Islands of Adventure themed Christmas decorations can be bought in Port of Entry Christmas. There are a couple of grab-and-go food options in the excellent Croissant Moon Bakery and Starbucks, as well as the fantastic restaurant Confisco Grill, which has just begun serving a new menu of cuisine from around the world. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully they're still doing that. <laughs> the Confisco Grill also has very has a very popular bar, Backwater Bar, attached to it. Love it. Uh, please take the time to appreciate this area, especially at night, and keep your ears open. Definitely. Heading counterclockwise, you'll enter the mainly family-friendly Zeus Landing, which is based on the books of the beloved children's writer Theodore Geisel. This area includes rides that will suit families with smaller children. Big kids are welcome too. Yeah, Darren spent more time in that area than he's ever spent his life <laughs> last year. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Darren. <laughs> and uh, the Cat in the Hat is a Disney-style dark ride through the story of the book and has a height requirement of 36 inches. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is a spinner ride in which you may get wet as you follow along with the song and that has no height requirement. Because anybody of any size can get soaked. Uh, the Carousel is a carousel featuring Zeusian characters which also has no height requirement. And finally, the High in the Sky Zeus Trolley Train Ride is a twin track train, that's very hard to say, uh, ride above Zeus Landing following the story of the Sylvester McMonkey McBean and the Sneetches. And this ride has a height requirement of 40 inches. Now there's one main eatery in the Zeus Landing area and that is the quick service Circus McGurkus Cafe Stupendous, which serves fried chicken, spaghetti, pizza, cheeseburgers and chicken Caesar salad. And as of recording, you can also get a unique selection of tater tots at Green Eggs and Ham. Whoop, whoop. Yes. Sweet treats can be found at Snookers and Snookers Sweet Candy Cookers. And when it's open, gourmet cotton candy at Honk Honkers, you can, which melts very fast in the Florida sun. Really as does. I found <laughs> out, it was running down my arm. You can also find the two signature drinks of the area, Moose Juice and Goose Juice. And those drinks are Moose Juice and Goose Juice. Uh, all your Dr. Zeus gifts can be found in the Cats, Hats and Things shop, Mulberry Street and all the books you can read. Stepping inside the next island, we see that the Lost Continent is an area set amongst the ancient myths and legends of Greek gods. Uh, this area is a lot smaller than it used to be due to a large portion of it being repurposed for the addition of the Wizarding World of somebody. Oh, Harry Potter. That's right. Uh, this area includes no rides, uh, but does feature a walkthrough attraction. Uh, this attraction is Poseidon's Fury, a walkthrough show themed to an ancient battle between Poseidon and the Lord Darkenon. Uh, this show has some great effects, but unfortunately is looking a little dated, uh, but definitely worth catching at least once. Agreed. Uh, yeah, we did this last trip, and, you know, it's fun. Don't miss the awesome Mystic Fountain in front of the now-closed Sinbad Theater, a great interactive element that will be a hit with kids and adults alike, but be careful, you could get wet. <laughs> <laughs> the Lost Continent contains a few places to eat, the highlight being the park's signature restaurant, Mythos. Uh, don't be put off by its signature status, as it's a lot more affordable than you may realize. Uh, so serving salads, sandwiches, and a range of fish and meat entrees, it is reasonably priced and well worth a visit. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the standout quick service venue is the Fire Eaters Grill. Love that place. Uh, serving uh, gyros, chicken stingers, hot dogs, and salads. And don't forget Doc Sugres for kebabs and hummus. Shopping is plentiful in this area too. Uh, you can buy anything from coins and medallions forged and struck in front of your eyes uh, to numerous collectibles, including a small armory full of historic swords and daggers. Yeah, that area is a shadow of its former self. Yes. yes. Because and most you of get it... those. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, you get those items uh, when you leave the park. <laughs> yeah. You don't get to carry around your swords and daggers. Yes. Uh, the main reason why the Lost Continent is a lot smaller and a lot less in it than it used to be is because of our next area, which is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade, um, which actually replaced the original Merlinwood area of the Lost Continent. Now, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade, I'm just going to call it Hogsmeade from now on, yes. contains three rides. The family-friendly Flight of the Hippogriff, which used to be the Flying Unicorn. It's a small family coaster that has no inversions um, and is centered around Hagrid's hut and his pet Hippogriff, Buckbeak. And it might break your back as it stops at the end, <laughs> yes. so be careful. Um, the height requirement is 36 inches. Uh, 
And the limit's not much more than that. <laughs> yeah. You um, can jam yourself in, though. They don't yeah. Next up is... I, I always used to say this was probably the signature ride, but I don't know whether it is anymore now. Um, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Now it is a ride like no other. Uh, and is housed inside Hogwarts Castle itself. Um, and on Forbidden Journey, you will climb aboard an enchanted bench to do battle with a fire-breathing dragon, some acromantula, the Whomping Willow, Dementors, and much more in this state-of-the-art attraction. That is a must-do. Um, the queue itself is... it was I think it was the beginning of what themed queues really started to step up. Um, and Universal used to offer a separate Castle 2 line, but they don't anymore. But don't hesitate to take your time and let people pass you in line if you really want to take in the queue, because it is worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, the height requirement is 48 inches but be warned people of a larger stature may not be permitted to ride and please use the test seat out in front of the attraction to save embarrassment later because when it first opened yeah it was it wasn't pretty at times yeah and even some other times when you've eaten a couple more donuts than you (laughs) thought you had (laughs) now here's a hint I'll give you um, if you are prone to motion sickness, it can be a bit ropey. And I learned on the last one that if just close your eyes during the screens and it helps a lot. And then you're missing some of it, but you can still get to ride it without feeling sick at the mm. end of it. Yeah, so my other tip is you can look all the way to the extreme left or right and up or down either either way. Just look at a corner, basically. Okay. Uh, and you can see way outside the screen uh, if you're not. So basically you can see outside the screen and you can see the area around in the walkways and it's a lot easier uh-huh. if you're feeling uneasy cool um next up is the newest ride in hogsmeade and that is hagrid's magical creatures motorbike adventure now this highly themed story coaster takes place throughout the forbidden forest with some amazing animatronics uh, and a couple of unexpected twists which if you've only ridden coasters in florida you've probably never done before Mm-hmm. Uh, the minimum height requirement is 48 inches. It does not go upside down and gives guests the opportunity to ride in one of two different ride vehicles, the motorbike or the sidecar. Uh, the, we talked about Express Pass. This is prob- I think this is the only attraction in the parks that doesn't accept Express Pass at this point. Um, another attraction that's housed in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is the mini short Ollivander's. Um, where one person will be picked out of a small group to have the wand choose them, like you see Harry in the movies. Um, It's a great show, but it can draw large crowds. And parents, be warned, if your child gets picked, they do not get to keep the wand that chooses them unless you pay for it, (laughs) as we found out. Yes, life. Uh, There's one main eatery here, and that is the three broomsticks, which serves English fare, such as fish and chips, shepherd's pie, and Cornish pasties, as well as three types of butterbeer, and many other signature soft and alcoholic drinks that are all worth your time. Um, Sweet treats from chocolate frogs to cauldron cakes can be found at Honey Dukes. And like any theme park, shopping is in abundance in Hogsmeade. You can buy your own one from Dervish and Bangs, as well as lots of other Harry Potter-themed merch. You can purchase all your Hogwarts house-branded stuff at Mr. Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods. Um, postcards can be bought and sent with an actual Hogsmeade postmark on from the Owl Post. Um, and don't forget to meet with the Hogwarts Express conductor himself in front of the iconic train. Um, and be sure to catch the performances of the Frog Choir. I love them. A lot of people don't. I, I think do. they're awesome. Uh, and of course, the Tri Wizard Spirit Rally. I like um, that as well. And just outside of Hogsmeade, you can also catch the Hogwarts Express to Diagon Alley from Hogsmeade Station. But you will need a park to park ticket for that to happen. Yes, and in our next area, welcome to Jurassic Park. As of recording, the area is full of construction walls due to the land work and construction going on. No, those are actually uh, dinosaur skeletons. (laughs) Those aren't cranes. Uh, Realistic life size. Uh, There's going to be a yet-to-be-announced roller coaster coming to the area soon. Velocicoaster. Which is rumored to be a multiple launch high-speed coaster in the same vein as Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens. But it's not expected to open until 2021, so it doesn't belong here at all. <laughs> You're just going to see its remnants everywhere. Uh, there are two main rides in this area. The Jurassic Park River Adventure is a boat ride that goes through Jurassic Park itself, but you are pushed off course when something goes wrong in the ride, plunging down an 80-foot drop, and you will get wet. The height requirement is 42 inches. Next up is the Pterodon Flyers in Camp Jurassic. This is a suspended ride above Jurassic Park. Pterodon Flyers is designed for children 36 to 56 inches in height. Guests over 56 inches in height must be accompanied by a child meeting the 36-inch height requirement. Ooh. 
<laughs> Children between 36 and 56 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. There are two other attractions in Jurassic Park. The Discovery Center, which is an interactive exhibit, and secondly, the kids' play area, Camp Jurassic. This area is full of cargo nets, slides, and water cannons, the perfect place to let your kids run off a little steam. And you, <laughs> if you've had you know, a couple energy drinks. Yeah, but be careful those slides. We've gone down them as adults. You might get stuck halfway down. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, they'll rip your outer layer off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a layer of skin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was a great place to view construction in the area at the time as well. Uh, you can also meet Blue the Raptor at the Raptor Encounter for a great photo and video opportunity. Really great experience. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, there are a few places to eat in Jurassic Park. The Burger Digs and the Discovery Center does exactly what it says on the tin, and Thunder Falls Terrace is a quick service place for chicken, ribs, wraps, and rice bowls with an amazing view. Uh, other options include the watering hole for small snacks, drinks and alcohol, and Pizza Predatoria for pizza and sandwiches. Uh, shopping can be found in Jurassic Outfitters at the exit of Jura- Jurassic Park River Adventure for all your JP merchandise, as well as the Discovery Center. Don't forget to check out the other dinosaur photo ops as well. Now, the newest island added to Island's Adventure is Skull Island. Skull Island is not strictly a land, as it only houses one attraction, which is Skull Island Reign of Kong. Uh, This is a brand new 3D Jeep ride attraction containing live actors, screens, and mind-blowing animatronics. And it was pretty bloody awesome. And it looks awesome at night. Uh, The height requirement for this is 36 inches. Now, the attraction could be too intense and scary for young children, and even some adults, to be fair. Um, Parental discretion is advised, though. Uh, Snacks can be acquired in Skull Island at the mess tent, including hot dogs, pretzels, churros, and drinks. That just sounds like a well-rounded meal to me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, Skull Island doesn't have any dedicated store but King Kong merch can be purchased from many of the stores on the park and on City Walk. Moving right along uh, Toon Lagoon is the next area on our tour and is modelled on the comic strips of yesteryear You'll find Hagar, Beetle Bailey Popeye and more in this colourful and very wet island So Everything's wet It is uh, And all yeah, the kids it, say, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there are two rides in Teen Lagoon, and they are both water rides, but well worth checking out. Uh, the first is located to your left when entering from Jurassic Park, and it is Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges, a water rapid style attraction in which guests sit in 12 person rafts to plummet and plunge through every manner of water trap. Warning, you will get wet. Oh, yes, will get wet. This ride is awesome, though. So <laughs> yeah. wear a bathing suit and go ride it. No. Uh, to ride, you must be 42 inches, and uh, guests between 42 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising adult. Uh, next up is Dudley Do Rides, Ripsaw Falls. Uh, now, this water ride is a log flume type ride, and once again, you will get wet. Uh, you must be at least 44 inches to ride, and guests between 44 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising adult. Also, head down to the lagoon for Me Ship the Olive. And this colorful ship is an imaginative play area packed with fun from bow to stern. Across three decks, you'll find passageways, slides, climbing nets, horns, an interactive piano, and more. Uh, you can even squirt unsuspecting passengers of Popeyes and Bluto's bilge rat barges with water cannons as they sail by below. Let's be honest, it's the only reason you go on that ship. Yeah. It's free squirting. Yeah, exactly. There are two main eateries in this area, Blondie's, home of the Dagwood, uh, that serves made-to-order deli subs and sandwiches, including the famous Piled High. Dagwood uh, is your main counter service option. And Comic Strip Cafe is a cafeteria-style food court uh, where you have your choice of fried chicken, fish and chips, hot dogs, burgers, and Italian dishes. Uh, During peak time, Wimpy's can sometimes be open, serving burgers, and don't forget your ice cream at Kathy's. Shopping is plentiful, too, uh, from Gasoline Alley for beach towels, sandals, beach bags, sunglasses, T-shirts, and hats to the Betty Boop store to tune extra for your favorite cartoon characters, apparel, DVDs, gifts, and souvenirs. And don't forget to visit the Character Factory and create and costume your own plush animals. Toon Lagoon is also a great place to let your kids run off steam and cool down as there are many water features for your little ones to enjoy, and some great photo ops are available in the comic book speech bubbles. Although the only reason to go in there. Don't eat the mushrooms. That's the one I remember. Uh, 
we uh, finally get to the last land of islands of adventure and step into the pages of Stan Lee's Marvel comic books in Marvel Superhero Island. So in that land, you will find the Fantastic Four, Captain America, the Hulk, Spider-Man, and many more of your favourite Marvel heroes and villains. Um, but unlike the ones you're going to see on the movies. Exactly. The this is the explain to your kids uh, yeah. about the old days. <laughs> um, but there are four attractions in this area. The first ride you will hit entering from Toon Lagoon is the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. Uh, if first of a kind motion based 3D adventure, Spider Man is still seen by many as the greatest attraction in the world. Not by me, I like it, but not that much. Um, but it is definitely a must see. Uh, you must be 40 inches to ride this ride, and guests between 40 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising adult. Uh, next up is Doctor Doom's Fear Fall, a 200 foot drop tower that not only sends you falling back down to earth faster than gravity, but launches you 185 feet into the air at breakneck speed. And you must be 52 inches to ride that ride, or at least 52 inches. Nope, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving through Marvel Superhero Island, the next attraction we will come to is Stormforce Accelotron. Um, it's a teacup-style ride that if you ride with Tracy, you will puke. Yes! Um, <laughs> it is hosted by the X-Men Storm and has no high requirement, but children under 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion, not even an adult. Bring your baby! <laughs> <laughs> the final attraction we come to is the recently renewed Incredible Hulk coaster. This is an awesome coaster that launches guests out of a tunnel at 67 miles an hour in 2.4 seconds, I do believe it is, and features seven inversions, including a Cobra roll and a Zero-G roll, and now includes on-ride audio created by Patrick Stump of Fallout Boy. Does it have a California roll? No. Damn it. If you are a coaster fan, this is one not to be missed, and you must be 54 inches or more to ride this ride. Um, Marvel Superhero Island has two restaurants, Cafe 4, which has pizza, spaghetti and meatballs, fettuccine, meatball subs and chicken Caesar salads, um, and which also hosts the Marvel character dinner uh, Thursday through Sunday and costs forty nine ninety nine for adults and twenty four ninety nine for kids. That is a, like, a, well, it says a character dinner with Captain America and Storm and Rogan. What have you? Mm. Um, there's also Captain America Diner, which has an all American menu of cheeseburgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers and crispy chicken salad. Both are the only things America needs. Yeah. yeah. Um, shopping is in abundance here too. The Spider Man shop is your one stop place for all your webhead merch. The Marvel Alterniverse is where you will find character t shirts, sweatshirts, toys, collectibles, mugs, souvenirs, and you can also get your photo taken with the amazing Spider Man himself. Um, official Marvel comics, books, graphic novels, posters, and collectible busts and figurines can be bought at the comic book shop. Uh, and one final thing not to miss is the regularly scheduled Marvel Heroes Parade, where you'll see Spider-Man, Captain America, Storm, Rogue, Cyclops, and Wolverine will come out on ATVs to meet and greet with guests. But also, if you're a fan of villains, keep your eye out too for Doctor Doom and Green Goblin, as they can be seen roaming the area also. Crossing City Walk, you will come to Universal Orlando Resort's original and best park, Universal Studios, Florida. If you want to avoid the crowds at the main turnstiles, you can try the side entrance near the Blue Man Group, but it's not always open. No. As you cross the bridge in front of the NBC Sports Grill in Peru, don't forget to get your picture in front of the iconic Universal Globe. Wait it for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Quick, hurry, go! <laughs> oh, you blinked. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stalling while Lee edits. <laughs> On entering the park, you will arrive in the entrance plaza. You will find guest services to your right, and then we'll move into Production Central. Here you'll find four attractions. Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is a non-inverting, terrifying roller coaster <laughs> that has many one-of-a-kind twists and a... Oh, yeah, the terrifying part is the vertical lift hill. The best part. The most unique element of this coaster is the ability for you to pick the music track that you will listen uh, to while on the ride. Track listings can be found online. And the secret tracks, too. Yes. Once you sit down, you will have a touch screen on your lap bar, which is your only restraint, <laughs> that you choose from a number of tracks, but be warned that you only have a short amount of time to choose while you are completely vertical <laughs> <laughs> going up the lift hill. You must be at least 51 inches to ride, but this coaster also has a maximum height restriction. So if you are over 79 inches, you won't be able to ride. Next up is Shrek 4D the best attraction at Universal. This is an in-theater 4D attraction that takes place in between the stories of the original Shrek and Shrek 2. 
Let's talk about Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, which is next on our tour. This is a theater-style attraction in which you board uh, moving seats to join Gru, his daughters, and the mischievous minions on a heartwarming and hilarious simulator ride. And it's no longer in 3D. Uh, guests must be at least 40 inches to ride, and non-moving seats are available. The last attraction we come to is Transformers the Ride 3D. The attraction is very similar to The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, and is a replica of one found in Universal Studios Hollywood. A motion-based 3D absolutely. attraction in which you join Optimus Prime as you protect the AllSpark from Megatron and other Decepticons. See if you can notice where the elevator is. It's actually really tricky. Uh, you must be at least 40 inches to ride. The only eatery in Production Central is Universal's Classic Monsters Cafe, a quick service location that is serving a new barbecue-style menu and features themed dining areas such as Dracula's <laughs> Castle, the Swamp, and a Flying Saucer. Shopping is in abundance in Production Central. For all your Minion stuff, head over to Super Silly Stuff. <laughs> the Supply Vault has all your Transformers merchandise, and you can get Shrek gear at Shrek's Ye Old Souvenir Shop. Moving to Clockwise, we move to New York find, area, actually. and we have two rides here. Uh, then Rest through New York ride, starring right, Jimmy Fallon, which I really Then for like. everything in one place, the, the Universal Studios store has it all. It's more the sum of its parts than the ride itself. Walk through tonight's show history before seeing the Ragtime Gals live on stage. They are awesome. They are awesome. And then enter the theater for a 3D attraction. Uh, this attraction was the first to feature a virtual line. Uh, grab your virtual ticket from the Universal Orlando app or at the kiosk yep. at the attraction entrance and then come back when your time is ready. You'll then be issued with a colored card and you can hang out playing games or relax in comfy chairs and catch the ragtime gals and then ride the ride. Or hashtag the panda. Yeah. He's also there. Yes. Um, who We didn't catch, did we? I think he was just going in when we... Yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, you can even charge your phone while you wait. Brilliant. Um, it has a minimum height requirement of 40 inches. And everyone should go and do it at least once. I like it. Yeah. Uh, now, the second ride here is Revenge of the Mummy. This is an indoor dark ride roller coaster themed after the Brendan Fraser series of mummy films. Guests must be at least 48 inches yeah. to ride. Yeah. All bags and loose items must be put in a locker, which are located at the left of the entrance. Now, this ride could be too intense for younger children as it contains darkness, insects, not real ones, but there probably are a few real ones in there, uh, fire and loud noises. Yes. And watch for those sudden stops. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, now, the mm -hmm. only other attraction in New York is the Blues yeah, like Brothers show, which going. takes place on Delancey Street. That really is worth a stop. Yeah. Uh, awesome. It's a musical showcase of live blues presented by Jake and Elwood Blues. And if you hang around afterwards, you can meet the guys themselves. Yep. Awesome. Now, dining in New York can be found at Louis Italian Restaurant, which is a quick service restaurant serving pizza, spaghetti and salads. Mm. <laughs> Hidden gem. <laughs> there, is also, there is also Finnegan's Bar and Grill, which is a table service Irish restaurant serving fish and chips, corned beef and cabbage, Guinness beef stew and sandwiches, and it also has a very popular full-service bar. Tell Jan we said hi. <laughs> yep. And finally, there is a Starbucks for coffee and pastries. Now, shopping can be found in New York at Sahara Traders at the Mummy Exit for mummy-themed apparel, toys, novelty hats, uh, Egyptian statues, jewellery and gifts. And the Christmas shop opposite Transformers is there for all of your Universal Orlando Christmas decorations. Every house should have one. The film vault has memorabilia from classic Universal movies and extinct attractions like Ghostbusters and Back to the Future. Very well worth a look and spending a few quid. There is also a... A few quid? Yeah. There is also an arcade here, so if you need to get out of the rain for a bit or cool down, head in there. San Francisco. Uh, there's only one attraction in San Francisco, and that is one of the greatest rides ever created. <laughs> Fast and Furious Supercharged. Hmm. Uh, it is an attraction similar to Skull Island, Reina Kong. Shut uh, your mouth. <laughs> except that one's good. Uh, step <laughs> <Thank> to <laughs> an amazing recreation of the crew's headquarters filled with actual movie props and supercharged vehicles you've only seen on the big screen. Uh, right along with Dom, Letty, Hobbs, and Roman on the street chase in the middle of the high-octane world of Fast and Furious blockbuster films. Uh, it has a minimum height requirement of 48 inches and accepts Universal Express. You can get all your family merch at the custom gear store attached to the attraction, which is the largest store in this area. You can get a uh, wrench. Yeah, you can get a wrench bottle opener. So that's that's something fun. Right, it gets a wrench. 
And a straight up wrench too. Well, there you go. There are two eateries in San Francisco, Lombard Seafood Grill. This is Universal Studio Florida's signature sit down, full service restaurant and serves seafood, chowder, pastas, sandwiches, salads, and more. It's chowder. Uh, chowder. Chowder. It's chowder. Now, a quick service option can be found at Richter's Burger Company for burgers, including the ground shaking double cheeseburger that you can top at the Fixins bar, plus chicken sandwiches, grilled chicken salads, and milkshakes. Shopping can also be found in San Francisco Candy Factory for fresh made fudge, candy apples, gourmet cookies, and bulk candies in every color and flavor. Have you taken a stroll down Diagon Alley and visited Gringotts Bank? Taken a ride through New York with Jimmy Fallon? Visited the Truffle Trees and Zeus Landing or hung out with a real-life Transformer? No? Then what are you waiting for? At Universal Orlando Resort, there truly is an option for everyone. Or if you're leaning a little more towards pixie dust rather than wands and potions, Disney destinations around the globe await your arrival. No matter the adventure, our sponsors have you covered. Be sure to let the experts at Mouse and Muggle Travel Company take care of all your travel needs. Earning the distinction of being an earmarked agency specializing in Disney destinations as well as becoming one of the first to be named a You Preferred Agency with Universal Parks and Resorts Vacations. Mouse and Muggle Travel Company will ensure you receive top-rate customized service. Just visit mouseandmuggle.com to fill out a non-obligation quote request or send your request to info at mouseandmuggle.com. Their team can take care of you no matter where in the world you go. With a flick of their wand and a little bit of pixie dust, the process will be so seamless. Some might even say it's simply magical. The most recent land added to Universal Studios Florida is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. Uh, The main attraction in Diagon Alley is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. As we said about Forbidden Journey, only this one's 3D, is a cutting-edge 3D motion-based roller coaster through the vaults of Gringotts Bank. Um, definitely not one to be missed and guests must be 42 inches to ride. Uh, there may only be one ride here, but there are lots of other things to see and do. Make sure to look out for Creature in the London Waterfront at Grimold Place and do not forget to say hi to the night bus conductor and the shrunken head at the actual night bus. Uh, once inside Diagon Alley, be sure to watch WADA, the Wizarding Academy of Dramatic Art on the Carket Market stage as they perform puppet shows from the book The Tales of Beadle the Bard. Throughout the day, you can see the tale of the Three Brothers or the Fountain of Fair Fortune performed here. Uh, in between those performances, you can also see Celestina Warbeck and her backing group The Banshees perform some of their famous hits, including You Stole My Cauldron But You Can't Have My Heart. Uh, the original one shop is in Diagon Alley. Ollivander's is... The same as it is in Hogsmeade. The, it's exactly the same as it is in Hogsmeade, um, where one person will get to be have a wand to choose them. Um, food and drink options are a mass here. For a proper meal, the Leaky Cauldron is your best bet for typically English food, such as cottage pie, fish and chips, bangers and mash, scotch eggs and stew, as well as many of the Wizarding World's signature beverages. For a sweeter treat, you must stop by Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlour for wizarding ice cream flavours such as the signature butterbeer, apple crumble, chocolate chilli, salted caramel blondie, and much, much more. It is awesome. What was our listener choice? I think it was apple crumble, was it not? I think so. That was a while ago now. I'm not sure. I'm well, we'll try it. <laughs> um, be, to, be sure to stop by the Hopping Pot for Butterbeer, Pumpkin Juice, Wizard's Brew, Dragon Scale, and many, many more, but don't add fire whiskey to pumpkin juice. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Just, don't drink pumpkin juice at all. Just put it on the floor. <laughs> uh, finally, there is Eternal's Elixir of Refreshment. Grab a bottle of Gilly Water and then choose your portion, which is the flavoring, from Fire Protection, Babbling Beverage, Draft of Peace, and Elixir to induce euphoria. Um, shopping here is more prevalent than anywhere else in either park. The highlights include Borgen and Burks in Nocturne Alley for all your Death Eater and Dark Magic needs. Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes is Fred and George's famous joke shop. Uh, the Magical Menagerie stocks all your magical creatures. Quality Quidditch Supplies has all your Chudley Cannon and Quidditch needs and Globus Mundi for your Wizarding World travel merch. You can even go and see the Goblin at the Money Exchange to exchange your Muggle money into Nuts, Sickles and Galleons. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the ability to buy interactive ones. Uh, they can be used to perform 
real magic, in inverted commas there, inside Diagon Alley in Hogsmeade. Look out for the markers on the ground, and you will find these interactive elements in Hogsmeade also, as we have said. Uh, 3M that... reflective tape, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the last thing we need to mention about this area can be found to the left of Diagon Alley's entrance, and that is King's Cross Station. Uh, as long as you've got a park-to-park -park ticket, you will get to go through the barrier to get to Platform 9 and 3 quarters and catch the actual Hogwarts Express to Hogsmeade. Next up is World Expo. Here you will find a land within a land and two attractions. The first one we come to is possibly the greatest show ever, Fear Factor Live. A stage show based on the TV show of the same name in which park guests can join in to perform gravity-defying stunts and other challenges. Guests can sign up to participate an hour before each show in front of the stadium entrance. This attraction is usually unavailable just prior to and a few days after Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, next up, we have Men in Black Alien Attack. This is an interactive dark ride based upon the 90s film starring Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. You will patrol the streets of New York picking off aliens with your guns, racking up points, which makes this a hugely rewritable attraction. Yeah, it does. Because <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, always. Several times. Guests must be at least 42 inches to ride, and riders between 42 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. There are no restaurants, but you can get ices and the like at the stand across from Men in Black and get all your Coke products from the Coke kiosk located between Men in Black and Springfield, which is the next section of the park we enter. The main attraction of this land is Simpsons the Ride. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Simpsons the Ride. <laughs> it's a motion-based simulator, and unlike many rides in Universal Studios, Florida is not good. Uh, <laughs> is not 3D. Uh, guests must be at least 40 inches to ride, and guests between 40 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. Finally, in Springfield, we have King and Kodos's Twirl and Hurl, which is hilarious. An interactive family spinner ride in which guests must try to move their vehicles to trigger targets that will set off special effects. There are no height restrictions on this ride. A lot of people skip it. Don't do it. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. The main place for food close to World Expo can actually be found in Springfield at Fast Food Boulevard. At the entrance, you'll find Moe's Tavern. Step inside Springfield's most recognizable tavern where you can enjoy a real Duff beer, locally brewed exclusively for Universal Orlando Resort. Be sure to try the Love Tester machine in the corner, but forget about the jukebox. It's broken, <laughs> as usual. Uh, Fast Food Boulevard is a food court-style eater eatery and contains Krusty Burger. For a crusty certified meat sandwich, including the legendary crusty burger, clogger burger, the rib witch, sideshow Bob's foot long, or a heat lamp dog. And then wash it all down with an authentic buzz cola. It gives a lot of people headaches though, so be careful. <laughs> the frying Dutchman for basket o shrimp, the basket o calamari, the basket o bait, which is fried fish, shrimp, and calamari, battered and plattered fish, or the clam chowder. Cletus's Chicken Shack serves the chicken and waffle sandwich, the double batter chicken platter, chicken arms, chicken <laughs> legs, thumbs, <laughs> more, all kinds of stuff. Luigi's Pizza, choose from the cheese pizza, the vegetarian pizza, or the meat likers pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa's Tea House of Horror for healthy and delicious prepackaged items are available here, including salads, veggie sandwiches, turkey wraps, hummus, fruit plates, fruit cups, and assorted yogurts, yeah, aka vegetarians only stop at Universal. Yeah, I had that turkey wrap. It was not good. No. No. Uh, outside, you will find Bumblebee Man Taco Truck. Yes. The star of Channel Ocho's long-running variety show brings a muy bueno taste of Mexican street food to the streets of Springfield. I do not pronounce Spanish words that bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lard Lad Donuts, where you find giant donuts, ice cream, and the brain freezing donut sundae, which is both of those combined, <laughs> and it's amazing. And finally, Duff Brewery. You can sit by the waterside or at the bar and sample three different Duff beers, Squishies, and the famous Flaming Mo. Shopping in Springfield and World Expo can be found at MIB Gear for a complete range of Men in Black gadgets and devices, plus MIB apparel, futuristic toys uh, from across the galaxy, holographic jewelry, an assortment of alien artifacts and souvenirs, and for some strange reason, leather goods. Okay. Anyway. The Quickie Mart is in Springfield, and there's a place to stock up on the Simpsons-themed toys, T-shirts, books, souvenirs, and more. Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone is Universal Studio Florida's area dedicated to kids and families. Now here you'll find many attractions for smaller kids. Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster is a family roller coaster. 
and guests must be at least 36 inches to ride, and guests between 36 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. Uh, the E.T. Adventure is one of Universal Studios' opening day attractions, and is a dark ride in which you board bicycles as you join E.T. to journey back home to save his poem planet. Um, guests for this must be at least 34 inches, and if you're between 34 and 48 inches, you must be accompanied by a supervising companion. Now, two family shows can be found in Kid Zone. Um, animal Actors on Location is a theatre-style show in which you can see handlers showcase how filmmakers use animals in movies. And uh, A Day in the Park with Barney, which is loosely termed as a family show. Um, <laughs> you can join the big purple dinosaur in a sing-along, clap-along live show. And be sure to go into Barney's backyard for an indoor interactive play area for smaller kids. Mm -hmm. Refer kids. to our last walkthrough for more. Yes. Episode 23. Yes. Uh, bigger kids may get stuck in Barney's backyard. Uh, this area... <laughs> <laughs> this area also contains two huge children's play areas. Fivel's Playground, where kids can run, jump, climb, and bounce through this outdoor playground filled with oversized props from the films An American Tale and Fivel Goes West. And then there's Curious George Goes to Town. Curious little ones can explore the colour colourful animal show tent with plenty of play activities for toddlers. Enter the town's cartoonish buildings and grab a pump, valve, hose or lever to spray or dredge your friends with water and head to the man with the big yellow hat's ball factory where you can throw, blast and launch thousands of soft foam balls at family and friends and anyone else within reach. Kids Zone Dining can be found at the quick service Kids Zone Pizza Company for pizza and pizza fries but it's only open seasonally. Shopping here can be found at the not-to-be-missed Spongebob store pants for all your bikini bottom goodies. E.T.'s toy closet is for your E.T. merch. And if you want Barney stuff, you can go to the Barney store for that. Moving on to the final area of Universal Studios, Florida, we enter Hollywood. Now, we have two attractions here. Uh, entering from Kid Zone, we hit the Universal Horror Makeup Show first. Uh, a comedic, more adult stage show themed around horror movie effects that could be too much for sh smaller children. Uh, make sure to take a good look around the foyer as it houses props from some of Universal's most famous movies. It's an awesome show. Go see it. Uh, the second attraction is, as of recording, not open, but it will be The Bourne Stuntacular. Uh, Universal has described this new attraction as a show that will follow Jason Bourne around the globe as sinister characters pursue him. Uh, this action-packed show will feature thrilling chase scenes, punishing fistfights, death-defying leaps, and danger around every turn. And it will all happen right in front of you with live performers, interactive props, immense LED screens, uh, making it impossible to determine where the live action ends and the screen begins. Uh, all we know uh, is that it will open in spring of this year. Uh, now, dining in Hollywood can be found at Mel's Drive-In, which has burgers and fries, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers, onion rings, root beer floats, and frosty milkshakes in a 50s style setting. Swab's Pharmacy is an old-school soda fountain in which guests can purchase ice cream sundaes, milkshakes, malts, banana splits, Dole Whips, and ice cream floats, but is only open seasonally. And uh, finally, the Today Cafe, big-time favorite of a lot of people. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, NBC's long-running morning show is the inspiration for this one-of-a-kind cafe. With its stage lighting and Today segments on the big-screen TVs, you'll feel like you're actually on the Today set. Uh, now, one of the standing features of this cafe is seasonal dishes inspired by Today personality. Uh, you'll find baked goods, freshly prepared salads, tasty sandwiches, and specialty coffees, including a unique Today Cafe blend. Uh, from a morning cup of coffee to a delicious lunch or dinner, you'll feel a part of the show's Studio 1A experience every time you visit. Um, shopping could be found in Cyber Image, but is, as of this recording, closed as work on the Born Stuntacular continues. Uh, you also have the Betty Boop store for all your Betty Boop themed collectibles, jewelry, toys, gifts, and apparel. The Hello Kitty shop, in which you can purchase everything Hello Kitty and Sanrio, uh, as well as meet Hello Kitty herself outside. Uh, Williams of Hollywood sells props that were actually used in attractions around the park. Definitely go there, because they always update their merchandise. And finally, we come to the Brown Derby hat shop for headwear of all types, including visors, uh, character and novelty hats and wigs, uh, Universal Studios logo caps and other stylish lids. Uh, Universal Studios Florida also offers a daily parade and a nighttime lagoon show. 
The Superstar Parade takes place in the park either mid-afternoon or early evening, depending on the day, and features EB from Hop, Gru, the girls and minions from Despicable Me, Dora and Diego from... Dora and Diego. Dora (laughs) and Diego and SpongeBob SquarePants. But please check your park map when you get in the parks for the specific times and the parade route. And Universal Cinematic Celebration is Universal Studios Florida's nighttime extravaganza on the Parks Lagoon. Featuring water screens and fireworks, the show usually takes place around park close. Again, please check your park map for exact times. Next up is Universal Orlando's water theme park, Volcano Bay. Now, Volcano Bay can be accessed by resort bus from the parking hub or by a special walkway for those staying at Cabana Bay. And the park is split into four areas. The Volcano, Wave Village, Rainforest Village and River Village. Now, one of the main features of Volcano Bay is their Tapu Tapu wristbands. Uh, You'll use this to ride most of the attractions at the park by using the virtual line, uh, activate interactive surprises, open rental lockers, and make cash-free payments and more. Yep, uh, the volcano contains one attraction, and that is the interactive vol, the spirit of Krakatau. Moving clockwise from the entrance, we come to Rainforest Village, and it contains eight slides. Kala and Tai Nui Serpentine Body Slides. Uh, take a leap of faith from atop the volcano where sea and sky meet. Trap doors plunge two guests down clear intertwining tubes before sending them splashing into the turquoise waters below. Both slides have a height and weight restriction of 48 inches or and 275 pounds. Oh yeah and oh no drop slides. Make the climb across a deep chasm. Brave the rope bridge and take the plunge down a serpentine adventure that ends six feet above the wading pool. Be sure to yell your battle cry of oh no as you soar out into space and splash triumphantly into turquoise waters at the base of Krakatau, 48 inch height restriction. Makupui round raft rides. The Maku, enter the dramatic lava tube on the six person raft ride. Maku slides at high speeds through a volcanic gorge before spinning around bowl like formations. When a geyser blasts, you're sucked into a watery vortex and deposited into a calm pool at the canyon's end. Height and weight restriction of 42 inches or 1,050 pounds combined. Uh, Pui, enter the dramatic lava tube path on this multi-person rafting ride. Test your bravery on Pui, where you feel the thrill of zero gravity hang time before you explode out into the far side of an immense funnel, then splash your way to the bottom. There's a height and weight restriction of 42 inches or 850 pounds combined. The Tanawa Tubes. Uh, Tonga, the Watori mirrored the coiling trunks of the tallest puka trees when they built two curving green water slides. Try both tracks, but watch out for the tiki statues that surprise you with sprays of water. Height and weight restriction of 42 inches or 450 pounds combined. The Rocky, in, inspired by twisting roots of the puka trees, the Watori built two twisting blue water slides. Try both tracks, but beware. Mischievous tiki statues again spray jets of water when you least expect it. Height and weight restriction of 42 inches or 450 pounds combined. Uh, the Punga Racers. Uh, Favored among Watori children, Punga racers send single riders on their manta ray mats sliding down four lanes through underwater sea caves. And to this day, the first racer to cross the finish line receives a celebratory spray of water and a special salute from Punga himself. Height restriction of 42 inches. There's also Tewa, the Fearless River. Head to Hammerhead Beach and take a thrilling whitewater ride along Tewa, the Fearless River. Put your life vest on and race along a roaring watery onslaught of churning rapids and chopping waves. 42 inch height restriction and the Puka Uli Lagoon. This don't puke in the Puka Uli Lagoon. This relaxing leisure pool features playful elements that even the tiniest Watori can enjoy like tropical bongo drums and the spring jets of water set beside the splash pool for the Oh yeah. And Oh no body slides. You'll have a great view of all the fun as riders splash down from above and hammerhead beach for a relax. Eating can be found at bamboo chef for burgers, fish and chicken sandwiches Chicken fingers, edamame, and quinoa burgers, fruit, salads, and desserts. And the feasting frog for tacos and nachos. And the Kanuku Boat Bar, which is a full-service bar with tropical island drinks. Thanks. Mm. Next up, we have the River Village. This area contains three rides. The Krakatau Aqua Coaster, which is four-person canoes which slide through the mists and into the dark twists and turns within the volcano before emerging with a plunge through a shimmering waterfall. Height and weight restriction here of 42 inches or 700 pounds combined. The Honu Ika Moana? Uh, Honu. Just like the ancient Waturi people who rode the ocean waves on friendly sea turtles, you can take a wild ride. 
Honu sweeps up massive walls and blazes with Baturi turtles in this twisting, turning and multi-person slide. Height and weight restrictions of 48 inches or £700 combined. Ika Moana. Just like the ancient Baturi people, again, who rode the, o- the ocean waves on friendly whales this time, you can take a wild ride. Deja vu. Ika Moana sprays water like a whale's blowhole from the centre of the raft in this twisting, turning, multi-person slide. Height and weight restrictions of 42 inches and £750 combined. Now, there are two kids' areas. Runamuka Reef, which is a favourite play area for... Uh, for Waturi children with its geezers, water guns, slides and dump cups. Shaded by bamboo sea creatures and waving seaweed, this whimsical play structure is the most playful spot in the park. And then there is Tot Tiki Reef. Even the youngest Waturi can get in on the fun. Play among splashy slides, a tot-sized water volcano, a family of tikis with spring fountains and singing whales. And then there is the Kapiko Wai Winding River. Take a slow ride through the tropical landscape of Universal's Volcano Bay. Sprays of water surprise along the way, and beneath the lava rocks, Stargazer's Cavern reveals the magical night sky above. Now for food, we have Waka Wai Wai Eats for specialty pizzas, footlong hot dogs on pretzel buns, fruits, salad, jerk mac and cheese, and desserts. Uh, the last area to cover is Wave Village, which contains Ko Okiri Body Plunge. Uh, join in the tradition of honoring the volcano god Vol, featuring a 70-degree fall through a drop door and 125 feet of white-knuckle fun. Uh, This dizzying descent ends with a watery tribute from Vol himself. Height and weight restrictions of 48 inches and 300 pounds. The Reef. Watch the bravest Waturi take the Ko'okiri body plunge from the comfort of this peaceful leisure pool. A clear plexi tube shoots straight through the 5.5 foot deep shallows, uh, which features its own private waterfall, perfect for frolicking. And Waturi Beach. Locals know that the waves are always perfect at Waturi Beach, where lapping surf overlooks the picturesque wave village uh, with an unforgettable view of Krakatau, the mighty volcano, and its stunning series of waterfalls that pour into the sparkling lagoon. You can swim, splash, and relax right along with them. Uh, Food and drinks can be found at Dancing Dragon's Boat Bar, which is a full-service bar with tropical island drinks. Delicious. Uh, Koala Reef Restaurant and Social Club, which has ribs, chicken, pizza, fruit, salads, guava tapioca pudding, and desserts. Interesting. Mm. Um, When visiting Volcano Bay, make sure to look at the options for seating. There are regular lounges scattered throughout the park that are free, but Volcano Bay offers premium seating, which is a pair of padded lounge chairs with an adjustable shade canopy, a lockbox, and an area attendant to provide provide food and drink service. And these premium seats start at $19.99. And then they also offer single and family cabanas, which come with towel service, padded lounge chairs, complimentary fruit and snack basket, a small fridge, and concierge service. Now, the single cabanas start at $159.99 plus tax, and the family cabanas start at $299.99 plus tax. Uh, Finishing up our tour of Universal Orlando Resort, we will look at the Lowe's operated on-site hotels, and they are split into four categories. Value, Prime Value, Preferred, and Premier. Hotel privileges include early park admission, resort-wide charging privileges with room key, and complimentary delivery of merchandise purchased throughout the resort to your hotel. The two value hotels actually sit on the corner of iDrive and Universal Boulevard and are the resort's newest properties. The Endless Summer Resort is split into the Surfside Inn and Suites and the Dockside Inn and Suites. The latter, as of recording, has yet to open and it's due to open on March 17th, 2020. Isn't that St. Patrick's Day? I don't know. I do believe it is. Uh, This fun, family-oriented Surfside uh, includes extra affordability to your Universal vacation. The feeling here is relaxed and easy with a cool surf vibe woven throughout. It really does look very beachy. Yes. Uh, in addition to the beachy surf-themed standard rooms, Surfside Inn and Suites features spacious two-bedroom suites that sleep up to six, making it the perfect spot for families of any size, unless it's more than six, to experience a Universal Orlando resort vacation. And then unwind in an all-new carefree escape that's extra affordable at the dockside. Inspired by Sam, sea and breathtaking sunsets, this retreat has a coastal vibe and comes with all the fun and convenience of staying with Universal, including awesome hotel benefits. With plenty of standard rooms and spacious two-bedroom suites at Sleep 6, it's a great spot for families of any size to base their Universal vacation. 
Universal's Aventura Hotel, a prime value hotel, is the, is the modern and stylish place to stay. This perfectly priced hotel offers exclusive theme park benefits and was, is within walking distance of Universal's Volcano Bay, offers great views of all three Universal Orlando theme parks, and is underscored by a design that is vibrant, free-flowing, and calming. It's your chill zone, your party place, your hangout, your refuge. It's everything you want it to be. It's just plain cool. Uh, it contains a mix of standard rooms and family suites that sleep up to five. Now, for dining, you have the Bar 17 Bistro uh, with commanding views of Universal Orlando's three theme parks. Uh, Bar 17 Bistro on the rooftop of Universal Aventure Hotel is a breezy retreat from the late afternoon well into the night. Offering unique dishes as well as classic fare, a Bar 17 Bistro will also feature custom-crafted cocktails designed to pair with the urban international flavors featured on the menu. Sounds good. Also a cool spot to hang out on, on the roof of a hotel. Yes. So, uh, you also have Urban Pantry. Now, at this food hall, you'll find a variety of high-quality dining options, uh, unique themes, and visual experiences all in one spot. Choose from a rotating selection of international flavors at the roast kitchen, have a custom wok dish at the Asian station, or grab a burger or pizza made fresh right before you. Uh, open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Bar Ventura, uh, the lobby bar, is contemporary and inviting. This breezy and comfortable meeting space is the perfect before or after dining hangout. Bar Soul. You might spend a whole day in the relaxing surroundings of the hotel's pool. And why not when all your frozen drinks, cocktails, beer, and wine are right here? <laughs> Starbucks. Starbucks is the premier roaster and retailer of specialty coffee in the world. The Starbucks at Universal Aventura Hotel is in the heart of the hotel lobby and offers you your favorites and a few you may have never tried. Pool and Kids Splash Zone. Uh, now the pool, a splash zone for kids and a fire pit provide for plenty of chill time after a day in the parks. Uh, this is where you'll soak in the fun, cool off, and tell tales of the day's adventures while planning the next. You also have a fitness center, uh, so you can stay in your fit zone even on vacation. You also got a game room, uh, so you can head to the hotel's virtual reality game room where technology and motion tracking controllers deliver an experience unlike any other. A Universal Studios store uh, where you can find towels, teas, toys, toiletries, and more at the Universal Studios store, conveniently located in the hotel lobby. Uh, there's also a resort kids camp, and uh, at the Universal Orlando Resorts Kids Camp, kids can kick back with supervised fun and entertainment while adults enjoy time to themselves. There is a fee, and advanced reservations are recommended. Moving on, we come to Cabana Bay Beach Resort, and this is the other prime value hotel on site and has a retro theme based around your typical old school road trip vacations in the US, not in the UK. Um, it has standard rooms and family suites that sleep up to six. The showstopper rooms are the Volcano Bay View rooms that have floor to ceiling windows that give breathtaking views of Volcano Bay. I would love to stay in those hotel rooms because you would not get mm -hmm. me out of that room. <laughs> Uh, the resort features a 10-lane bowling alley, the Galaxy Bowl, which is $15 plus $4 shoe rental for one hour's bowling for one to three people or an hour and a half for four to eight people. Uh, there are two pools, one with a water slide and the other has a lazy river. The hotel also features the Jack LaLanne Physical Fitness Studio as well as a Universal store and an arcade. Now, dining can be found at the Bayliner Diner Food Court, and has, it's a 600-seat grab-and-go center for burgers, milkshakes, pizza and pasta, a bakery, sandwiches, and more. Um, also, the Galaxy Bowl has limited seating, full-service dining option for appetizers, sandwiches, burgers, pizzas, and hot dogs. Of course, like everywhere else, there is also an on-site Starbucks, and the pool bars offer signature frozen drinks and smoothies. Um, we will discuss this more later, but Cabana Bay does not offer Express Pass. Guests can get to and from the parks and city walk by shuttle bus or by the walkway that takes approximately 15 minutes. Sapphire Falls is Caribbean themed and is the only preferred hotel. It features 1,000 rooms, of which 83 are suites. Uh, rooms offer free Wi-Fi for up to four devices. Pets are permitted for a $50 a night fee, no more than two pets per room. Sapphire Falls has one 16,000 square foot pool with a hot tub, kids water play area, and a slide. It has the Kalina Health and Fitness Center, which is complimentary. It also has a games room and universal store. 
Dining options include the Amatista <laughs> Cookhouse featuring Caribbean cuisine, the Drum Club Canteen for a tapas style menu, the New Dutch Trading Company is a grab and go option, and finally, Strong Water Tavern features rum and a ceviche bar, <laughs> and so much more. Guests can use uh, the complimentary water taxis or take the lovely walk to City Walk. Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort is the first of Universal's premier hotels, which give guests a complimentary unlimited express on the day of check-in and the day of check-out and all in between. The resort is themed after the South Pacific and features a thousand rooms, eight Jurassic Park themed kid suites, 40 suites and 952 standard rooms. The Royal Pacific Resort features one pool, two hot tubs, an interactive water play area for kids, a beach volleyball court and private cabanas to rent. And on select nights, the dive-in movie will be screened at the pool. Now, dining consists of the island's dining room, offering traditional breakfast with a Polynesian twist. Highly recommend that. Yep. And Pan-Asian cuisine for dinner. Orchid Court Lounge and Sushi Bar serves sushi and South Sea martinis. There's a a new lobby marketplace with grab-and-go food coming soon. There is also the Bula Bar and Grill, which is a poolside eatery. Jake's American Bar for lunch and dinner, serving burgers, chicken, fish and more. But the Royal Pacific Resort also hosts the Wonderland Luau, which I still haven't done. Um, now, this is a weekly Hawaiian dinner show featuring an, featuring an all-you-can-eat buffet of Polynesian specialties, live Hawaiian music, and a traditional hula dancing. And a character breakfast is also held at the resort. The Hard Rock Hotel is the second premier hotel at Universal Orlando and also features complimentary unlimited express passes. It features 650 rooms which are 12 all-American music-themed kid suites, 489 standard rooms, 86 club-level standard rooms, 42 deluxe rooms, and 21 other suites. The Hard Rock Hotel has one pool, which features a 260-foot water slide, as well as music that plays under the water. Yes, that is correct. (laughs) Uh, Guests can also take part in dive-in movies here, too, on select nights. There are two main dining options at the Hard Rock Hotel. The kitchen serves a character breakfast as well as lunch and dinner. Uh, they also offer the famous kitchen challenge. Take it on if you dare. But don't because it'll kill you. <laughs> We've tried it twice. It's terrible. A famed New York steakhouse is open for dinner only. Uh, but you can also go to uh, Emac and Bolio's Marketplace for ice cream, sorbets, and frozen yogurt. Uh, the Velvet Bar for a chilled martini or a cocktail and appetizer. And the Beach Club is a poolside bar for Cabo Wabo cocktails, light snacks, and refreshing drinks. The hotel features a complimentary fitness center, the Rock Shop for all your Hard Rock merchandise, and once a month, guests can purchase tickets for Velvet Sessions, a live concert in the hotel lobby featuring some great acts. Uh, guests can go to City Walk and the parks by either walking the short walk through the Butterfly Garden garden, or get a water taxi. And finally, we will wrap up the hotels with the flagship on-site hotel, which is Lowe's Portofino Bay and is themed to Portofino, Italy. The hotel features 750 rooms, consisting of 242 standard rooms, 18 Despicable Me-themed kid suites, especially for Andy Diginova, 94 club-level deluxe rooms, and 21 suites. It features three pools. The Beach Pool, which has a sandy beach and water slide and features diving movies, as do the other two. The Villa Pool has upgraded amenities for a relaxing couple of hours or an afternoon. Uh, And the Hillside Pool is a quiet pool offering more privacy. Your dining options here are Mamma Della's Ristorante for authentic Italian cuisine. Uh, Bice Ristorante is an exquisite culinary voyage, and Trattoria del Porto offers breakfast and dinner featuring burgers, sandwiches, and Italian fare. There is also Sal's Market Deli, which has brick oven pizzas, antipasto, and more. The Thirsty Fish is a harbourside Italian wine bar. Um, Bar America has special drinks and Italy's treasured grappas. Uh, Splendido Bar and Grill is a poolside eatery. Now, the hotel features the Mandara Spa, and a complimentary fitness centre. The spa offers guests customised and personalised treatments to fit their needs. Um, Now, the Portofino Bay also has some special events, which include Harbour Nights, which is a food and wine and live music event, and also Musica Delle Notte. Uh, Music of the Night showcases a unique blend of classic opera, romantic and festive music, along with popera favourites. Um, guests can make their way to the parks via the water taxis or the approximately one mile garden walkway 
Universal Orlando Resort also hosts many seasonal events as well. Universal Orlando's Christian Rock Festival, Rock the Universe, comes to the resort in January. This year saw the very first running Universal. February, March and April sees Universal's Mardi Gras celebrations come to Universal Studio Florida. Themed food, parades and some big name bands make this a great event. September, October and some of November sees the country's leading Halloween event take over Universal Studios Florida. Halloween Horror Nights is a must-see event for any scare attraction fan as the park is transformed into things from your nightmare. Finally, throughout December, sees the holiday take over the resort with the holiday parade featuring Macy's and performances by Mannheim Steamroller at Universal Studios Florida and the Grinch comes to town for Grinchmas at Islands of Adventure. Please check out UniversalOrlando.com for more details on these events. And that is it, our overview of the resort. Hopefully it'll give you the info you need to be able to enjoy everything that Universal Orlando has to offer. It is pretty exhaustive, there's a lot more, but we want you to go in and find some of these things for yourself as well. Um, I do want to say a big thank you to Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides for fact-checking all this information. It has been a slug to get through, but we hope you appreciate it. Of course, for more in-depth information, a discussion and chat, go back into our archive and continue to listen to the podcast. And of course, enjoy your next visit to Universal Orlando Resort. (laughs) 